mind. <clears throat> so I'm in the Chrome app version of GeoGebra. I'm in the graphing calculator part of that app. But you can do this using the desktop app, or you could use your phone or your tablet. Um, they all pretty much have the same features. I just like the Chrome app because it's easy to use. I don't have to worry about keeping it updated or whatever. <clears throat> it's just going to work. So I will type in my function again, f of x equals 0.5x cubed. As with Desmos, you can type it in directly like I just did, or you can use the on-screen keyboard, whatever works for you with whatever tools you're using. I'm just going to hide the on-screen keyboard there. And I'll zoom in a little bit so that we can get a better sense of what's going on. I've got my function. Next, I'm going to put some points down. I could add in points using the input here, typing them in. But since I don't really care where those points will be, uh, I'm just going to go up to the Point tool, click on Point on Object, go over here, and put down some points. All right, points A and B. Now we want a line between A and B. So there is a line tool. If I click on there, I can click on line and then select the two points. Or you can go to the input. Don't need that. Go to the input, type in line. GeoGebra is going to suggest some possible commands. I would just want the two points. So I'll say a line between A and B. And there we go. It's given us a line. Now, to get the slope of this secant line, we can either type in slope of g, or there is a tool for that. If you go up here, you click on slope and click on the line. So the thing about GeoGebra is that it has a lot of tools built in along the bar at the top here, and those tools will be different depending on which of the apps you're using. And those tools will be pretty intuitive. But anything you do with these tools can also be accomplished by a command or a function of some kind. And when you use those tools, if you're paying attention to the algebra bar on the side here, it's going to show you the commands that it actually used behind the scenes. So if you plan to be using GeoGebra more for other lessons or assignments, if you're paying attention to those commands, if you look at the examples uh, in the course that you're doing, then you'll become a little more proficient with GeoGebra and you'll be able to use it to do more things. So here it's telling us that the slope of this secant line right now is 1.11. If I flip back to the mouse icon, because these are just arbitrary points on the function, I can just drag it around like that. And the secant line will move with it, and the slope will move with it. So now the slope is 2.19. So again, let's say we want to estimate the instantaneous rate of change when x equals 1. So I'll drag my point A very close to 1. I'll drag my point B very close to 1. And you'll see that we're closing in. It's 1.47. Remember, we think it's 1.5. So we can do exactly the same thing here that we did with Desmos earlier in the video. It's almost identical. It's just a little bit different in terms of exactly how you do it. Now, GeoGebra does have a way to graph the tangent line very easily for you. There is an option up here in the perpendicular line tool. There's a tangent line. You can also type it in as a command, which we can do now. I'm just going to go ahead and hide some of these points. We don't need this stuff right now. And I didn't ask it to do that perpendicular line. There we go. All right, so I want a tangent. First, I need a point. I want my point. So I'm going to say P is going to be the point. Um, 1 comma f of 1. There we go. There's our point P. Now I want the tangent. So you see when I type in tangent, it tells me I need a point and then either a conic or a function. So I'll put my point as P and my function is going to be f. So the tangent of P on the function f is y equals 1.5x minus 1. This means that the slope of this tangent line is 1.5. So the instantaneous rate of change is 1.5, which is what we expected because we found the approximate instantaneous rate of change using the secant lines. So what GeoGebra is doing here behind the scenes is it's using calculus that you haven't learned yet. 
Uh, and as you go on in the lessons, you're going to learn more about derivatives. You'll be able to do some of this stuff without having to graph it out. But here, this is how you can use GeoGebra for that.